and this is a video that I've been like excited and I couldn't wait to do like I, I I'm yeah I'm actually like this is probably gonna be one of the most fun videos for me to make all you have to do is follow what these other companies are doing here Welcome back to the channel and this is a video that I've been like excited and I couldn't wait to do like I, I, I'm yeah I'm actually like this is probably gonna be one of the most fun videos for me to make but not sure how you guys are gonna receive it but hopefully you're gonna like it but um yeah if you've known me for a while or if you've been following the channel for a while I'm a huge Mazda like advocate a huge Mazda fan I love like just the the whole idea of Mazda like how they make their cars and you know going back to the zoom zoom stuff you know they make they make everyday cars fun and and also accessible you know so they don't price them out of every every everyday people's reach and they make them fun to drive so if you're a car enthusiast then and you've driven a Mazda you'll know what I mean like just the way how they drive they're just amazing so <clears throat> with that being said I'm gonna go ahead and say these are the things that I think Mazda can do as a company to be number one right now. And I already see them moving in that direction, you know, considering that they're a smaller car company and stuff. But I'll jump straight into it. Now, I'll start out with things that they can improve on on the platform that they already have. So we have a 2024 Mazda CX-90 preferred, and I love it, you know? And I would say these are some things I think that they should offer on the on the preferred, you know, just to kind of like make it that much better. I think that they should. I know they do it on a higher trims, but I think they should make these body color match, you know, so body color match for all the, the, the side here. Um, another thing that I think that they should do, and it's a small thing. All right. Uh, so yeah, first thing is replace these key fobs. Uh, I gotta get this out. Oh man, I got all my other keys in here. But anyway, replace this key fob with a more traditional looking key fob. Like, okay, so this is like my Honda key fob and this is my vw key fob this vw key fob would be ideal it has like a nice good weight to it and everything it would be ideal if these weren't like the touch capacitive if it was just like physical buttons like how it is on a honda but yeah so just a regular key fob like this i think works better than having it all on the side here it, it kind of feels cheap and then also it doesn't work all the time like you know so I guess the key fob it falls asleep or something if you don't use it so when i do like this now it, it 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 opens up but before it wouldn't do it so fix the key fob give us a brand new key fob something that feels a little bit like heavier and sturdier or just better better built because like on our cx5 i dropped one of these and yeah it was not good like you know it pretty much just fell apart it's it's not the best quality so upgrade your key fob Mazda that's one of the first things that I'd like to see them do uh and the other thing I think with the CX-90 is dang near perfect to me they just gotta you know tweak little things where the you know the technology is just you know a little bit more dialed in and everything like works a little bit better but this is a first year model so uh, you know, I think they're going to iron those things out anyway. Uh, another thing that's a pretty simple thing, like, it seems, you know, like I'm really nitpicking, which I am. It's like, you see how they have the privacy shade here? Like, I think the hooks, if the hooks were on the outside, or I mean, were on the, yeah, facing the outside of the car, it'd be easier to use than how it is here. So, like, when I pull this up, like... Oh, I actually got it that first time. <laughs> well, yeah, normally I have to struggle to try and get both of them on there, but that's uh, that's another thing that I'd like to see. And then, so we have like the full uh, second row here, not the captain's chair, but what I'd like to see with the captain's chair is 
instead of giving that middle console, I would delete the middle console altogether and make it so that people can just walk through into the back area. So just take a step and walk through, go to the back, you know, versus having to do this and, you know, push the seat forward and all that. Like I would much rather just have like a walkthrough. So like my kids, they could just kind of walk into the back there versus having to move the whole seat forward. Because when you have to move the seat forward, you can't have like another car seat here or anything like that. So you would have to take out the car seat and then, you know, so just have it like a, a walkthrough where they can just walk through the, you know, walk through here, through the middle and go to the back. That will be another design thing. But that's, like I said, it's a nitpicky thing. Nothing that serious. Overall, I love the the design. I love the the engine. I love everything. Now, speaking about the engine, now let's go on to some major things that I think Mazda can do here, right? And this is the juicy bit. This is the the part where I think Mazda can really kind of take over if they made these simple changes. So one of the first things I love that Mazda does. They give you the hood struts. That's a huge plus. And then they made this gem of an engine. This, this inline straight six that has, I think, a much higher capacity than people realize, right? But I just love it. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing engine. Now, I would like for them to bring back the Mazda 6, right? And they can have like a regular luxury version Mazda 6 with this engine that would be nice and everything. And then do, I don't know, they, they say Mazda Speed or whatever is too childish or they don't like the idea of calling something Mazda Speed. Or I don't know why they veered away from Mazda Speed. But I think they should do a Mazda Speed version of the Mazda 6 with this engine turned up to about 450 horsepower and a manual gearbox and if they offer that car and they price it for under like 55,000 it's going to sell like crazy it's going to sell like crazy and it will beat out like I I I'll, I'll go on notice of saying this now if Mazda makes a Mazda Speed 6 with a manual gearbox and this power plant this inline straight straight six motor i'm buying it one way or another i'm buying it i'm telling i'm saying that here and now i will buy that car like and i know i spoke to q to chaotic by the way shout out to the whole moc shout out to q to chaotic blueprint one elite 100 gang eight shout out to our crew shout out also to will motivation that's our guy shout out to papa long legs that's our guy also Shout out to Race Car 21, uh, DBX 79, and a, there's a bunch of people that that subscribe to us that's been rocking with us, and I'm happy, you know, to have all of you be a part of the channel and stuff. My bad, I gotta get uh, it's OCD. Gotta get these these leaves out of here. I'll probably do the rest off camera, but I just gotta get the main big ones out of here. Pause, no diddy. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so take there so for me there's not going to be that much r d involved since they already have this wonderful straight six motor i think that they should go ahead and offer the mazda 6 uh, and create a mazda speed 6 with that same motor and i think that's going to sell really really well i i do believe that they're already bringing back the mazda 6 hopefully they're going to bring it back with this motor hopefully they will offer it with a manual gearbox that would be absolutely amazing right so that's another thing now speaking of mazda speed i think that they should off also offer a mazda speed 3. i think they should offer a mazda speed 3 and they can do it with the they, they, the work is already done they already have a turbo uh engine mazda mazda 3 all-wheel drive right and I, i'll show you something right it's not that hard Mazda it's not that hard like you already have the the Mazda 3 with the turbo engine it has all-wheel drive right all you have to do is follow what these other companies are doing here like you see we have the Honda Civic Type R we have the Golf GTI well the Golf GTI they're veering off of the righteous path but as of 2024 you can still get it with a manual gearbox that's all you have to do, Mazda, I promise you. If you did some slight tweaking with that Mazda, that Mazda 3, 
gave it a manual gearbox, the Monster 3 that has the all-wheel drive and the turbo, if you offer that all-wheel drive, turbo, manual gearbox, and some slight uh, suspension tweaking to make it a little bit more like track worthy, you know, like give it like an independent uh, rear, rear suspension, you know, little things, man, little things that's just, just gonna make it handle a little bit better, I'm telling you, that's another car. And, and offer that car, for like 35, like basically under 40,000, offer it for under 40,000, that's gonna be another vehicle. And I, I promise you, if you, if Mazda, if you, if you made a new Mazda Speed 3 manual gearbox with the power plant that you already have, all you have to do is just tweak the suspension and the handling, make it look a little bit more aggressive, give it a manual gearbox, it's probably gonna outsell the Honda Civic Type R the GTI, it's probably gonna do all of them because people are longing for something like that. Like, I think that's gonna be a huge, huge, like, feather in the cap of Mazda, right? So, I think by offering those vehicles, right, that's just like the sporty side, because from what I've noticed, and I think Toyota is caught onto this too, when you offer sport vehicles, or, or you know, sporty themed vehicles, and you have them in your lineup, you're gonna pull in the enthusiasts, and guess what most enthusiasts have is family. And with the family that they have, they're gonna buy and shop, they're gonna stay loyal to your brand, and, and you know their families are gonna buy all your more practical vehicles. So it's good to have like nice halo, fun, sporty cars to pull people in the dealership. Sometimes people may just wanna see it and end up buying something more practical. And speaking of more practical, these are the last two vehicles that I think Mazda should produce that will basically put it over the top. So you see, we have the CX-90. It's a, it's, it has an amazing interior, right? Like beautiful interior, nice, everything. Like soft touch everywhere. It's beautiful, I love it, right? Why not, Mazda, hear me out on this. Why not bring back a Mazda van? Bring back a Mazda van. So something where, you know, it's a little bit more space for families. You can have, you can use this same powertrain or you can put in the turbo four cylinder. You know, you can do like a hybrid setup, but bring back like an actual family van. Like, you know, that was one of the, the things that I missed that Mazda does not make anymore is make like a family vehicle, make a family van. And I think that's gonna sell really well. People are gonna gonna love it, especially if you price it like you know in a good space. I think there there's definitely room for that. I think the you already have the powertrains. You just got to do the R and D on the actual design. And I think you can base it on the same platform as the CX90 and just design it to be a van. You know, so that's another thing. And lastly, the thing that would absolutely I think make Mazda number one and make it the number one car manufacturer in the world. If they did everything else that I just mentioned, like so they did the Mazda Speed 6, the Mazda Speed 3, offered them with manual gearboxes, made some slight tweaks on the CX-90 and the CX-70, keep the CX-5, like all of those things are gonna do well. Oh, oh actually no, I, <laughs> I should have I said this first. So I have three more changes that I would like to see Mazda make. And for this, I'm gonna go for a drive because I gotta, I gotta talk to you guys about this. Like this, this is serious. So let's go for a quick drive. So for the last two things that I would love to see Mazda do that I feel would actually put them over the top is, and, and this, this is, has something to do with you Q. Thanks a lot. You making me add this to the video is offer the Mazda Miata, the MX-5. Offer the Mazda Miata, make it a little bit bigger. Offer it with some more space. That's, that's you know, that car to me is dang near perfect, but it, 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 if you're over six foot, you know, five, you know, I, I would even say probably even like six foot three, you're not gonna be happy in there. You're not gonna fit in there comfortably. You know, like, you know, I'm 6'6", six, six, and I'm sure you guys have seen it. I'll, I'll put in a quick clip here so you can see. I could do this, y'all. Damn. Right. <laughs> what are you doing now? <laughs> oh, are you in there? 
Hold Kinda. On, hold on. Wait, one more leg. Get that knee up under there. I can't turn this. Look, there's no room. Oh, damn. I, but yeah, I am not able to fit in that car. And that is such an amazing car. You price so many people out of, not price, sorry. You make so many people, you know, cannot purchase that vehicle just because of their height, you know? So like, it's not a tall person or tall friendly type of vehicle. But if you made it just a little bit longer or, or did it in a way, you know, rearrange the space where the seats can go back further, I'm not sure if it's if it's slightly bigger in the RF version, but I just know in the convertible, I think they're, you know, even the RF, it's also a convertible, just a hard top convertible. Like regular, you know, people that's over six foot, it's very, it's gonna be very difficult for them to fit in there. And I feel like if they just made it a little bit longer or worked it out where that, you know, people had a little bit more leg room and space in there, that car, would sell a lot more and it would just be amazing if you know more people were able to buy that car and drive it because it's an amazing car and if you guys want to see more of that car you guys go subscribe to Q to Chaotic he has a new uh, Miata and that thing's an amazing vehicle so definitely go go check him out and if you if you're under six foot well I'm envious of all you guys go have fun with that car it's an amazing car but you know the the six foot taller people were we're kind of pushed out of that car so that sucks but yes that's something that i would love to see mazda do and then finally something that i think that would absolutely put mazda over the top would be to create a truck create and i think mazda they can base it off of the cx90 frame and just you know offer it a bed you know, with this same uh, transmission, this same, um, you know, engine, this inline six. And, you know, it, and I think with all the extra money Mazda's making, they'll also be able to even offer a V8 option if they want. They'll be able to build a V8 option. And look how fitting as I'm talking about trucks, like all you see here is it trucks, 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 right? <laughs> so I feel like offer the, you know, Give, give people what they want. Start making some trucks. And then if you really want to do something crazy, offer a sport truck with a manual gearbox with this inline six. And it would I, I believe it would absolutely put Mazda over the top because every form of enthusiast would, would come to Mazda. Like, and, they, and most enthusiasts are also family people as well. So we will get the vans, we'll get all the SUVs, we'll get the, all the economy cars to give our kids and stuff, the, the regular Mazda 3s, you know, and if you, you know, there's just so many, we would, we would buy the trucks, we would buy the Mazda Speed 6s, the Mazda Speed 3s, like, I just feel like if it, and, and I, I don't think it's going to cost that much in R&D because the, the platform is already there, the engine's already there. You know how to make a good manual gearbox, like as Q can attest to with the MX-5. You know, I think if Mazda just decided to focus on that and doing a little bit more, because I know they wanted to do luxury, and they've done it. You guys have done an amazing job with luxury already. Luxury is already there. Now we'd like to see some more performance, you know, oriented vehicles. I feel like if you did that and then combine with the van, uh, you know, for bigger families and a truck, you guys would corner the market. But those are my opinions. I want you guys to comment below and let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree with what I'm saying, if, if Mazda should open up. See, look, that family there has a sports car and a van, and it's a Honda van, you know, and, and right behind them had a truck. So if Mazda started creating these vehicles, because I think they've got things on lock as far as with the SUVs. Okay, yes, we get it. You make great SUVs, Mazda. We love them. Give us a couple more options. Like, if they did, I probably would have a full Mazda garage. I would have a Mazda truck. I would have the Mazda Speed 6 and the Mazda Speed 3. I'd have like all of them, you know? So if somebody from Mazda is listening or paying attention, please, please put some R&D into making these vehicles, make them available, and they will sell. They will sell like crazy, I promise you. But yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Race car friends, out. Take the AC off. Try it one last time and see what we get. Let's see how this goes.
6.9 and a huge third row seater SUV <laughs> with a straight six. And this is not even the most powerful one, you know? This is not even the 300 horsepower version. 